Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white ramp deck featuring four copies of Smuggler's Surprise alongside the new Voltborn Tyrant, a card that has impressed me whenever I've played with it so far, a 7-mana 6-6 dinosaur with Trample, and whenever it or another creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under our control, we not only gain 3 life but also draw a card, and when the Tyrant dies it will leave behind an artifact token version of itself which will once again trigger drawing us more cards and gaining more life. And then Smuggler's Surprise is a very flexible card, can cast it for 3 mana early on just to mill 4 cards and then find some creatures or lands to put in hand. We can also cast it for 6 mana total, which is usually the goal here, putting up to 2 creature cards from our hand onto the battlefield. So if we have 2 Voltborn Tyrants in hand, we could put them in play at instant speed as early as turn 4 in this deck. If we start with a turn 2 Glimpse, turn 3 cast Invasion of Zendikar, then we'll have 6 mana on turn 4. And then if we have additional mana, we can also pay the extra 1 to maybe give our creatures with power 4 greater Hexproof and Indestructible until end of turn. Can be a nice way to maybe stop a sweeper effect from taking out our board as long as it doesn't exile our creatures, so Sunfall will remain a problem for this deck, not only because it gets around Smuggler Surprise, but also because we won't get that artifact token from the Voltborn Tyrant. And then, of course, if we have 8 or 9 mana, then we can potentially mill 4 cards, finding 2 creatures, and then immediately put those into play, thanks to the second ability. So Surprise is an awesome payoff for a ramp deck like this. And then another creature that will play quite well alongside Tyrant and all these Enter the Battlefield abilities, of course, is Elish Norn, also 4 power, so perfect alongside the Tyrant, and this will double all our ETB effects while stopping the opponents. So now we get to maybe play Elish Norn with the Tyrant in play and immediately gain 6 life and draw 2 cards, which will help set up even more 4 powered creatures, such as the Topiary Stomper, which we naturally want to play in a ramp deck, as a 4-4 which can eventually start attacking and blocking with Vigilance as well, and then and this can also maybe find two lanes with Elish Norn in play. Then Invasion of Zendikar also can trigger twice with Elish Norn in play, although we'll typically end up playing it before we play Elish Norn, but you never know. And then once we transform the invasion, we get an Awakened Skyclave, another 4 4 creature which can help trigger Voltborn Tyrant, so that's also quite nice. Buried in the Garden gives us removal that also ramps us, and can also double the trigger with Elish Norn to exile two non land permanents the opponent's control. And then we've got a few sweepers here to help out against aggro, temporary lockdown, especially useful against a Boros Convoke deck, and then a two copies of Depopulate as an all-purpose answer. And sometimes we don't even mind casting it if we have a Tyrant on the battlefield, since we'll still be left with that artifact token version. And then the Trailblazer also synergizes quite well here, as another four-powered creature that can draw us additional cards, can even plot it, so then in a future turn we can play it and make use of the extra mana to maybe cast something more expensive and then you also may have noticed the armadillo in the two drop slot since this can be discarded for one and a green to search up a basic and gain three life and then in the late game maybe we end up uh, casting smuggler surprise for eight mana and then we randomly mill armadillo and we can put it in play still triggering cards like trailblazer and voltborn tyrant so it's just a nice top end creature to have while still being a fine turn to play and uh, that pretty much sums up our deck. I also have one Cavern of Souls, which can occasionally name Dinosaur to make our Stomper and Tyrant uncountable, or of course we can name Phyrexian if uh, we want to make sure Elish Norn resolves, and then a Blast Zone as an additional sweeper to help out against aggro. And then I'm a big fan of the Portico to surveil in this deck, since we can play it turn 1 pretty easily. And then we've got a bunch more dual lands. Make sure to have plenty of basics to search up with Stomper, Invasion, and of course Glimpse Decor. And then the Channel lands for more utility. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw here with what looks like a Keeper. If we can curve Stomper into Invasion, we can do a lot of ramping very quickly. And then we just need to find a second white source for lockdown, since we're up against the Boros. Do I need another planes? Not really. As long as we can naturally hit 5 land drops, we can enable Stomper to attack the invasion of Zendikar after playing it. Although we might take a slightly different approach here if we need to cast lockdown early. Okay, Glimpse was an excellent draw. Don't have any top end cards yet, so drawing a Voltborn Tyrant at some point would be nice. Alright, War Leader's Call we cannot take out with Lockdown, although Buseju could blow it up. And there's the Tyrant. 
So we could just play Invasion of Zendikar, and then wait another turn on Lockdown, and then I might play Tyrant first. Blast Zone also a way to deal with the Wardens, so we do have quite a few options here. Yeah, let's just play the Invasion. That ramps me the most. And uh, we shouldn't be in danger of dying next turn yet. Alright, Night Errant only tapping two creatures. Not too bad. Opponent finds a couple more one drops. So yeah, we could go Stomper plus Lockdown, but I think we wait on Lockdown and just play Tyrant. And then I'll draw off uh, Stomper entering as well. We also gain life, so kind of does double duty here. So our opponent needs to commit more to the board, but that runs into our Lockdown. So yeah, I imagine next turn we'll have to finally cast Lockdown, play Stomper, and if we draw an untapped land, maybe channel Boseju as well. Okay, opponent with a Demolition, so they are kind of going off now. Looks like another Knight Errant incoming. We'll eventually overpower these. Opponent can activate a Warden, and that's going to be the end of their turn, pretty much. If they do activate Warden, it opens up Voltborn Tyrant to attack our own Invasion to transform it, which also draws us an extra card. Okay, opponent just uh, attacking here. That's interesting. Maybe just trying to push as much damage as possible, but that's not going to work out too well for them. So, yeah, cast a Lockdown. Attack Invasion. Play Stomper after drawing here. And then don't need Blast soon. Back up to 14. And I can channel Boseju, can do so at instant speed as well. Yeah, I guess I'll leave both creatures back. Could also just play another Stomper to be fair, which is maybe just better. And then we can deal with the uh, War Leader's Call next turn. Can uh, cast our Smuggler Surprise using all three modes if we'd like. Maybe mill some other large creature. Could also try and set up an attack, have the opponent double or triple block, and then blow up their Anthem at instant speed. Buried in the Garden can deal with Knight Errants. I've uh, learned to manually tap with Buried in the Garden, otherwise the auto-tapper may not cooperate. Okay, can move to attackers. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. We're missing some interaction, so we might get run over by aggro. But the hope is that we can ramp out our tyrant to stabilize in time. Elish Norn is tempting, but I think I need to look for more lanes. So we can actually uh, reliably curve invasion into tyrant. Now Trailblazer can potentially be plotted, so it can give us an extra mana. But if we're up against aggro, then digging towards a lockdown could also help. Armadillo is not a bad draw, so that can get a planes. So yeah, our game plan is going to be simple. Cast Voltborn Tyrants, hopefully many of them, and the life gain should keep us alive against Monored. Okay, so now we can plot the Trailblazer. Just casting it is also reasonable. 
The goal's gonna now be to cast Smuggler Surprise for six mana, putting in double Tyrant. So Curving Invasion into Surprise will do that. So yeah, maybe playing Trailblazer as kind of a distraction would have been fine. But maybe we'll get to have Trailblazer in play while we put double Tyrant in, which would be even more fun. Opponent with a Lightning Strike in response, so we're at 12. Don't see them dealing 12 damage next turn, but it's not impossible. So, yeah, I don't really need the extra mana from Trailblazer, so I'll just play it safe and run it out here. Alright, there's Godric. Currently without celebration. So they likely have a monstrous rage in hand. So if I block Godric, then uh, we're not going to be able to take it out. If I take it, what happens? Six, seven, monstrous rages plus four, so it would put me to one. I mean, one's not dead. And then I have an extra trailblazer to transform Invasion of Zendikar next turn too. Yeah, it's a little risky. Just double checking my math here. Six, seven. Monstrous Rage is plus three, Enable Celebration is plus four. So, I'll take it. And there it is. Okay, I had one life against Monorets, but I somehow feel like I'm favored. A couple triggers. Attack the invasion, which will give us an extra mana so we can still use the armadillo if we want to gain three. But we'll get to gain six here as well. Not a bad turn. Okay, can uh, pass it back. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems a little too clunky to keep. This one I can try. Armadillo finds a third land, and then we'll need a fourth one. Facing blue-black. So probably not the best matchups for our removal here. Alright, Deep Cavern Bat. We'll see if they go for Lockdown or uh, Armadillo to try and hurt us in our mana development. That's the one downside of Armadillo. It can be taken by the Bat. Alright, goes for Lockdown. And we did end up drawing Brushland. Don't need to show them, but I guess I also don't foresee needing to use Poseidon in this matchup. So they know about Depopulate, so they're going to be pretty cautious to play around it. Channeler draws a card. And we'll get probably just a Plains here. Can Surveil. And a Trailblazer is not the worst. The fact that we can plot it helps play around a counter spell. Yeah, sure, I'll keep it. So we're not taking too much damage, so I'm not in a hurry to cast my Depopulate. So plotting the Trailblazer is a good use of my mana. They can just activate Mirax, but that's also not the most impactful play. Alright, bone going for Avarice, so they might be more of a combo deck after all. Which is maybe a concern if they can just one-hit KO us out of nowhere. That being said, I'll still plot the Trailblazer. We have two answers to, let's say, a blood letter, if that's the cards they're going for. But they could also just be playing this as a 3-mana draw 3 alongside Shieldred. And then we can try to use the extra mana from Trailblazer to maybe ramp out our Voltborn Tyrant. 
The extra mana from Buried in the Garden could also help there. Yeah, this Depopulate is having a paralyzing effect on our opponent, so they're not sure what to do. Alright, Greed's Gambit. That's unexpected. So, they're trying to combo it with the uh, Falcon to gift it to us, basically. There is also a blue card that can basically swap control of two enchantments, if that's their method instead, uh, which is a reason maybe not to play Buried in the Garden. But uh, I'm not opposed to just Buried in the Garden and then get rid of the Greed's Gambit, and then I'll have to sack three creatures, discard a bunch, and then we don't have to worry about the Gambit as much. That seems okay. And then next turn we can cast a Tyrant, perhaps. Alright, opponent keeps the bat. And we'll pass it back. So the game continues. They've got another Greed's Gambit, to be expected. But at least they're tapped out now. So we can have some fun with Trailblazer and Tyrant. So in hindsight, Buseju would have been an answer to the Gambit as well. Elishnorn would have been able to uh, stop Gambit from entering. Uh, I don't think it stops the Falcon, but let me double check. Yeah, the Falcon just works when it's turned face up, so I don't think Elishnorn really intervenes with it, sadly. So with that being said, I guess we play Tyrant first and then Trailblazer so that we gain some more life as well. And then Pwn's gonna play the Falcon here to give us a Greed's Gambit. And what's our response? Just gonna outvalue them with Tyrant anyways, I think is the plan. Alright, Shifting Rift, so they did have the enchantment swapping sorcery after all. Now this only works if your opponent actually has an enchantment. So it's not the most reliable build around, but yeah, it worked out for them here, sadly. We'll have to discard three cards and then sack three creatures, so that's quite the blowout. We'll hang on to Ilishnorn. And then I guess Channeler also way of picking up the Greed's Gambit again. Okay, play Elish Norn. And then Portico can surveil a bunch too. If I leave up two mana for Smuggler Surprise, I could make my creatures hexproof and indestructible, but that doesn't help against a sacrifice effect. Question is if our opponent's gonna triple block here. Which they might. So maybe I do just play the Portico and pass. And look for more heavy hitters. Lockdown's interesting. Can deal with our bat tokens. I think I'm still looking for more tyrants. So there's the game, but once again. Does not trigger because of Elishnorn, so. That's all right. Take our turn. And now Tyrant can potentially attack. Let's count up our mana. Let's see, three. This still makes two mana, just double checking. So a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, we can play a fully spreed surprise. So I think I'll uh, surveil first to set up our mill from surprise. Another lockdown I don't need. So let's go ahead and attack. And then I don't think I do anything here, just uh, keep up my mana. 
in case they were holding a counter spell. Elish Norn also stops Aether Channeler, so they need some other answer to the Mother of Machines. Besiege the Mirror. That can get whatever they want, so if they have an answer, we'll potentially see it. The hope is that they just main phase some sorcery speed removal on Elish Norn, and we give it Hexproof and Indestructible in response. It's going to be a Whale of the Forgotten. Trying to bounce Elish Norn. All right, we'll respond. I guess I'm one mana short here after all. I guess I might have miscounted here, so in that case, we're not going to be able to use the five mana mode. Didn't hit any creatures anyway, so not a big deal. And our opponent explodes. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a Keeper. Some early mana acceleration. Might struggle to cast Lockdown on Curve. Facing Black Aggro. So Lockdown could line up pretty well. And another Sleeper. Blast Zone could also clean those up. For now... Actually, an interesting choice. If I play Portico next turn, we can lock down, or I can Glimpse. I guess we could also just pass and then plan to use Armadillo to get another Planes. But currently, I might want Armadillo as a creature. So, I think I'm just going to ramp with Glimpse. There's a chance we draw a white source off the top. If not, I'll plot Trailblazer, play Portico, and take another hit. Had they played Gix on turn 3, they could have maybe punished my kind of passive approach. Okay, found the planes, so in that case I'm okay with lockdown, reset the board, and then next turn we can maybe plot the trailblazer and take it from there. Shieldred was to be expected. And a Smuggler's Surprise. Alright, drawing with Trailblazer in the face of Shieldred, not always the best idea. I think I still just um, play Portico, plot the Trailblazer, and next turn try to make something happen. Don't need Glimpse anymore. So we're going to be pretty low. Could die to Shieldred triggers. Maybe they have the Avarice here to make us draw three, we're dead. We get to untap. So fall to four, depopulates. Okay, that's an answer. So can cast that now. This name's Dino. And then if I need to gain three with Armadillo, we can do so. Otherwise, I might prefer keeping it to trigger a Trailblazer. All right, so we've got seven mana here. I think the plan is play Trailblazer. If her opponent tries to remove it, then we can surprise to give Hexproof and Indestructible. Although I guess the floating mana is going to go away here. So yeah, currently I can surprise milling two cards as well. If I just go for Hexproof and put in the Armadillo, then they would just respond. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass. Opponent does nothing. They will try to take out Trailblazer. In that case, I think it's worth it to surprise. Maybe just milling four and giving Hexproof and Indestructible and not put Armadillo in play yet. Since I don't have the mana to do everything. And we could use a bit more card advantage. Alright, hit Elish Norn and Portico. So now if I play Elish Norn, I draw two. And then we also fizzled the enchantment half of the card, which is quite relevant. A Rush of Dread. Okay, that works. So they might have the Blood Letter combo in the deck as well. So now we don't draw any cards. If I play Elish Norn, 
I can still play the uh, Stomper if I play Blast soon. That's probably fine. And then hope to find a Voltborn Tyrant at some point. And our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. One of the rare situations where we are missing green mana. I think I still gotta keep this since it has a lot of potential and all we need is just one green source within the first two draw steps. Which we're somewhat likely to do. So, turn to Glimpse. Does not seem like we'll need temporary lockdown in this matchup. So the main concern is getting milled out after drawing too many cards. Alright, never mind. Vanguard. So it might be a more aggressive deck after all. So lockdown could come in handy. Reinforcements, main phase. Sets up our lockdown quite well. And then next turn we can play Elish Norn before continuing to play our creatures out, perhaps. Although Trailblazer first, maybe by plotting it, could set up Elish Norn even better. So I kind of like that idea. So this can name Dinosaur. Phyrexian also a consideration. And then we'll start with Glimpse. And then we can plot Trailblazer, should our opponent be keeping up counter spells here. And then we could cast an uncounterable Voltborn Tyrant next turn. Or we can go Trailblazer into Elishnorn. Alright, Pun just main phasing all their creatures. And uh, I'm liking Elishnorn now. And then I can still glimpse as well if I'd like. Could also hang on to Iganju to answer the Sentinel. Um, I guess we can use the Trailblazer's mana to uh, cast a glimpse. So we'll need Cavern. Okay, so either Iganju or Glimpse. Glimpse will set up our Tyrants a bit better. If they remove Elishnorn, then I wouldn't be able to channel Iganjo either, so this seems fine. So Elishnorn will stop future reinforcements or Sentinels from triggering as well. Alright, Shield of Argive will still trigger. So that's worth burying in the garden. Although, we could have some fun with Voltborn Tyrant instead. Yeah, that's gotta be fine here. And get to draw a million cards. And, uh, let's see here, five, six, seven. Yeah, I guess we'll hang back. Opponent goes for it. And a depopulate can always clean up if needed. So yeah, the main concern here would be a card like um, Harbin giving the team flying. So we either need to gain enough life to survive that attack or cast a depopulate. Yeah, I think if we cast another Tyrant we should be safe. And we could bury it in the garden first as well, I believe. Two, three, four, five. I guess I'll be one short. Alright, could go for a smuggler surprise to do everything at instant speed.
Small chance this might get countered now, but we're not dead on board. Alright, ossification. It's not actually gonna trigger because of Elish Norn. Opponent goes all out. Could have also protected Elish Norn if uh, they did actually manage to exile it here. Double tyrants and let the triggers commence. So yeah, would have survived the Harbin attack pretty easily. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands, not the most explosive, but uh, should be functional. Tiny Bones makes me discard. And uh, probably get rid of a Portico. Could also get rid of maybe a Boseju here. And then turn one and two, play Portico to hit my land drops. Might regret it if I draw two drop I want to cast on curve, but I guess if we do draw Glimpse, then um, I can just cast a turn two and use that mana to play Stomper, so it's fine. Depopulate may not be needed if we already have Lockdown, and I do need to hit more land drops, so I'll get rid of it. Alright, bad. Can either take Glimpse or Lockdown, most likely. Goes for Lockdown. Draw another one. That's how we do it. Now, I wouldn't be able to cast Lockdown if I Glimpse, but I think that's fine. Can just play Stomper next turn to get an extra white mana. Alright, the Punisher can help them replay spells out of the graveyard if they commit crimes. So first play Stomper, then Surveil. And Surprise should be good. Currently only have the one creature to cheat into play. But uh, if we wait long enough, we can maybe end up uh, milling some creatures as well. So, yeah, if I cast Lockdown, we get a Lockdown back. So it's kind of uh, a fine exchange here. Opponent cutting down their own bat, so it's in the graveyard. So they can get it back with a Punisher. Fair enough. So that's their plan. Tiny Bones makes me discard. Hmm. I guess now I get rid of the surprise so that if they take Tyrant, I can use Lockdown to get it back. Or I can cast Surprise just milling four cards. I guess that's better since we're likely to hit two cards with it. And then I'll discard one of those. Alright, could have been an awesome turn next turn with another Tyrant in hand. And then I want an untapped land to potentially cast Tyrant, and I Ganjo has some additional utility. So I have to decide what to discard to Tiny Bone still. So I can guarantee cast Tyrant if I keep the land. Or I can be greedy, keep double tyrants, and hope to draw an untapped land naturally. It's not like her opponent's doing a whole lot here, so I think I have time to play it slow. Alright, depopulate's fine. Get lockdown back. And then one more land will unlock a pretty powerful play. Opponent's got another bat. Well, we've got a lockdown for it, so this doesn't matter too much. And our opponent's finally empty-handed. Alright, Glimpse will set up Tyrant for next turn, so just gotta hope they can make me discard two cards somehow. And then I can take a Blast soon to maybe answer the bait. All right, let the fun begin. I'll take a Smuggler Surprise off the top. Tiny Bones commits a crime. Although I feel like the criminal here. And 
and uh, sure, I can attack if they trade, we'll get another token. And draw even more cards. And turns out that Tyrant is pretty good in multiples. Elish Norn also goes a long way here. And then I can still play Stomper afterwards to essentially draw my whole deck. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got some removal. Trailblazer could ramp if we plot it. Sadly, gonna have to say no to a second Tyrant. Too much of a good thing. And facing Epicure, so... An aggressive red deck could be Boros, in which case Lockdown should shine. Boros confirmed. And Demolition. Do they also have a Knight Errant here? That would be bad. They do. Okay, well, that's the dream start for Boros. Turn to Knight Errant. Still probably have to lock down just to deal with the tokens. Otherwise we're taking a million damage next turn. And then hope for a land so we can bury Knight Errant in the garden. If not, Armadillo can get a land. So they're likely sitting on reinforcements to make more tokens end of turn here. Nope, Warden instead. Yeah, if I don't draw land, we're probably going to be too far behind. Glimpse. Hmm. So I can Armadillo, get a land, cast a Glimpse. Next turn, our opponent at the very least can play Recruiter, which is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So it would be at 3. And then I need to pretty much top deck a Depopulate to have a chance. Yeah, it's not pretty, but... I think that's still our best bet. If I go for Lockdown, I'm at 12. I don't progress my mana, so I'm never getting to Tyrant, which is how we can turn the corner. So, Armadillo first, get a Plains. And Glimpse, get a Forest. Opponent's gonna inspect her first, so if they have another land, we might just be dead. Case of the Gateway Express instead. So they will solve the case. Possible our opponents holding Gleeful Demolition plus Recruiter as a follow-up to a Sweeper. So now, if I buried in the Garden, answer Knight Errant, I can still lock down afterwards. Which seems to be the play. Alright, so the board's cleaned up. We're at 8, so not dead to the recruiter necessarily. And hopefully next turn play Tyrant. And then Elish Norn can be the follow-up, which will gain us six life and draw two cards at the very least. Well, this seemed like an impossible game to win, but we're still here. And there's another Knight Errant. But yeah, at this point we should have turned a corner. Play Elish Norn. And then can play Trailblazer as well. Or Stomper keep developing our mana, and our opponent concedes. Alright, so we get to see our green-white ramp deck in action. And yeah, Elish Norn could be pretty valuable if other people start playing with Voltborn Tyrant as well. So this could be kind of a mirror breaker. And as we saw, the deck stands a chance against aggro, especially if we draw some of our sweepers like Temporary Lockdown in a timely fashion. 
And then the main concern against uh, some controlling decks might be to run out of cards in your library. So a matchup like Blue-White Control could be tough, since they not only have counter spells and sweepers like Sunfall that exile the Tyrant, so we don't get the token afterwards, but then they can also have win conditions like Jace to mill us out, and we're already drawing a lot of cards ourselves, so it doesn't take much for the opponent to win the game. So those are going to be the tougher matchups for this deck. Not sure you could really address them too much after sideboard, so sometimes you're just going to have bad matchups and that's magic for you. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.